if you are the type who does not understand seasons of change, you don't know how to shift, you don't know how to adjust, you don't know how to evolve, you may get stuck. People get stuck in life. Have you met people who are doing so well, doing so well, all of a sudden, things just start going down again. So when I saw that that thing was not working, I began to pray, I began to wait on God. One day, I will, I, will not, I will not forget in my office, I just finished praying again and God spoke to me that divide the church into 12 families based on when people are born. I've never seen that anywhere. January family, February family, March family, April family. When we started that thing, but, but when we started discussing that thing in my office, we started planning, we, we were salivating. We started seeing that this thing will work. That this thing is like a fraternity. People get connected when they are born the same month. Am I correct? There's a natural likeness you have. You mean somebody said, I'm born the month you are born. If the person now wants to make it worse on the same date you are born, you, you, a stranger, you will hug a stranger. You will hug a stranger without knowing. Am I correct? People get married because they are born the same month. That's how strong being born is. So, and this thing, we just started it in our church. I had a meeting with Pastor Juadi last week because we've been running 50% of what it is. We've not even done 50%. And I told him that it's time for us to, to now go full, for, I mean, full, um, to go full length on this issue. But you see, what I want to bring out is that an idea stopped working. God gave us what? Another idea. The Holy Spirit can instruct you. The Bible says, he will teach your fingers to fight. He has bundles of skills and creativity. He is the, he is the author of creativity. So, have a relationship with him, fellowship with him, spend quality time in God's presence, you'll be shocked. You'll be doing things that you'll be the first that is doing it. I've never seen that thing anywhere before. Maybe it is somewhere, it's possible, because the Holy Spirit is not for one person alone. But God is my witness. It just came like that. There are things like that that just... Somebody is here. In the next seven days, the Holy Spirit will inspire you. In the next seven days, before we are back on Sunday, next Sunday, the Holy Spirit will whisper things to you. How to move your life to the next level. You are confused. You don't know what to do. The Holy Spirit will instruct you. And one good thing about the Holy Spirit is that when he says a thing, it's as good as done. Are you following me? And the things he will say can be very ordinary. It can look so what? Some of us, in the next seven days, a life-changing instruction will come your way. A life-changing idea will come your way. A life-changing inspiration will come your way. Something that will double your sales, triple your sales, will come your way. Have you not seen those who are selling land, telling you they want to give you a cow? Huh? During festive period. You see the bait? A bag of rice. Are they selling rice? It's a bait. Are you following me? You, you see, it, it, these are ordinary people now. These are ordinary people. One day, one of our members went for an interview. They didn't give him a job. I asked him to go back there. I asked him to tell them that, look, it's not about certificate alone. I know you want an accountant, but look, <laughs> this man standing before you is not just an accountant. You are not ordinary, and you need to know it. Some of you are smiling like, I'm, like am I speaking your story? You are not ordinary. Everybody can cook jollof rice. Your own is different. Huh? Yours is different. There is, your signature is on it. Hallelujah. They can imitate it. They can't get it. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Anybody who tries to be like you cannot be number one of you again. You, already, you have taken that number one position already. They can only be number two. You are the best of your kind. You are the best of your species. Nobody can compete with you on your own lane and win you on your lane. It's not possible. It's your lane. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's your lane. 
You have a lane. Discover your lane. Stay on your lane. Everybody who tries to run on that lane with fire behind you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is something unique about you. The Bible says you are a peculiar person. You are a holy nation. To be holy means to stand out. To be holy means to be, to be separate, to be different from them. Hallelujah. I listened to Bishop T.D. Jakes one day. He said nobody can be T.D. Jakes. You can only try to be like him. And that's the truth. There can't be another David that knew you, except maybe, maybe my son that is just trying to, his generation is ready for my generation. You are someone unique. You are called to stand out. You will excel. You will excel. You are not just a teacher. You are not just a nurse. You are the nurse. You are the teacher. A teacher, the teacher, they are not the same. A teacher is a teacher among so many teachers. The teacher is that one that stands separately in his own class. You are in your own class by yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I told one of our nurses in the church one day, I said, you are not just treating people, giving them a medicine, tablet. Your hand is full of healing. Just your hand alone. So while you are attending to a sick person in the hospital, there is a touch that you have that can heal. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. You don't have to be a nurse to have that touch. You don't, you, don't, you don't learn that touch in school, in medical school. It can only be given by the Holy Spirit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's, you are not just a tailor or a fashion designer. When you touch clothes, they respond to you. Your fingers are... He said, I will teach your fingers to war. I will teach your fingers to what? To war. When you... When, if you're a secretary, eh? You're not just a secretary. When you write a letter, the way, you, the, the way your fingers will write that letter, what you said to my reject letter, nobody will reject that kind of letter. I prophesy. That unique DNA you have that makes you different from others, that thing that makes you resemble God, because God is all, only in his own class by himself, I provoke that thing today by the anointing. When you step back to your place of work this, mo this month, this week, I decree and declare that thing will become visible to all. People will testify that you are different. Your voice texture will testify to it. Your resort from today will testify to it. When Daniel got to Babylon, he became ten times better. How many times? Ten times, not Three times, not two, ten times better than his equal. I prophesy. In the name that is above every name, the fresh oil coming on you today will make you ten times better. Amen. What you are trying to start, somebody is trying to start something, it will be ten times better. Amen. What you are pushing into the market will be ten times better. Amen. Your product and service, your CV will be ten times better. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Anyone here who has been stalked, I command today, from today, the Holy Spirit will inspire you. Amen. Within the next seven days, the Spirit of the living God, the one that created the heavens and the earth, will bring you into a dimension of creativity. Amen. Your creativity will not have number two. Amen. Your creativity will stand out. Your result from today will make you become a master. Amen. You don't know what I'm talking about. When our church was 20 years old, I was in my office and the Spirit of God told me, he said, take a paper, take a pen, write all the things that has worked for you in 20 years. No book was before me, just me alone. And I started meditating and those things were coming to me and I was writing them. And I wrote 16 modules. How many modules? 16. 16 unique things that worked for us the last 20 years. And after writing it down, the Lord said to me, he said, start training pastors on these 16 modules. I have never done a paid training for pastor in my life. The Spirit of God said, you don't want crowd. I don't want crowd. I want few people. So put a price on it. Listen to this. 
some years ago. So we advertised it. We put only my picture there. <laughs> pastors that were bigger, or my contemporaries were, you know, pastors to, pastors to talk. Oh, I was hearing talks that he's, trying, he's charging people. Will people come? Are they going to go? A particular pastor in this city who has a very big church, he was monitoring us. I didn't know. So one pastor came for that event. The pastor told me that he called him when he saw his video. He saw his picture among the people that came because we posted the picture. He said, hello? Bigger church than this church. I saw you in the pastor day. He said, um, we tag the program Growth from the Scratch. That is, if you're a pastor, you want to grow your ministry from the scratch because this church started beside the donkey. We didn't start with somebody giving us six million or somebody buying us equipment. Amen. A friend of mine started church. The day, the day they started, they had montage eight. We, it took us almost 20 years to have montage eight. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. You know, everybody has his journey. We, we didn't start from zero. We started from minus. You know, when you start from minus, it's below zero. That's our building. That's our building. That's our building. That's how we started. <laughs> we started from minus, <laughs> not from zero. Say from zero to hero. Ah, God bless. Congratulations. Our own is from minus to hero. <laughs> Praise God. So the man called. He said, Pastor Soso, I saw you in uh, Pastor Day's meeting. Were you there? He said, yes. Did people come? Ah, he said, people came from Ibadan, from Bekuta, from different places. He said, everyone, oh, my Baba Biara from US came. Ah. He said, the people pay. Ah. He said, well, I pay. <laughs> you know what he said? He said, ah. And I've been trying to do this thing. I thought that people would not pay. He's a bigger man, but <laughs> the devil, the devil make him feel that he doesn't have it. You know, you can have something and the devil will tell you that it works. He said to my dead loan. Anyone in that position here, you are gifted. Yet Satan keeps telling you you are nothing. You are gifted. Yet Satan keeps telling you you don't have it. Case I keep. You keep lowering your price. I command a turnaround in your life. Yeah. Everyone that fear has caged. Cage your product. Cage your service. Cage what you are capable of doing. Cage your capacity. I command the cage of fear to be shattered in your life. Yeah. I command the cage of fear and intimidation to be shattered in your life. I command the cage of fear and intimidation to be shattered in your life. Yeah. I saw a young lady online last week. The only thing she sells is jollof rice. And people order jollof rice from everywhere in Lagos. Bank order jollof rice. Shell order jollof rice. EFCC. Because I saw the carton of jollof rice. They were carton. She said some company ordered 350 pieces in one day. She did not bother herself to be cooking for everybody or to be cooking everything. You know, some kids are just, the way they taught you this business is the same way you are doing it. You cannot change it. You cannot pad it. You can't add to it. Or can a photocopy. You can't catch attention that way. I'm sure she too went to catering school somewhere, but she, she saw where her signature is. She saw her lane and she stayed on her lane. I told my wife, I said, ha, ah, if she's selling 500 pieces in a day and she makes 1,000 from each pack, how much is that? Okay, let's say she makes just 500 naira. That is 250,000 per day. Who makes that kind of money in Nigeria? I prophesy. That idea that will terminate your struggle, that idea that will make you not to have competition again at work, that idea that will make you be in your own class by yourself. Within seven days, the spirit of the living God will instruct you on it. Amen. Everyone that their mind has been contaminated, I command your mind to be washed. Amen. You are leaving this place to excel. Amen. You are leaving this place to excel. Amen. Stand on your feet and wave your hands to Jesus wherever you are. You bait that company and that company's sales will increase in the name of Jesus. Patronage will double, triple in the name of Jesus. 
Wave your hands and give him all the glory. Give him all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. I am blessed this morning. We are asked to bring a picture of whatever is your dream or aspiration. I'd like you to lift up that picture this morning. Are you ready? Lift it up before God. Lift up. I'd like you to lift up a picture as a point of contact to your dream, something that represents your dream. Are you ready? There is power in what you see. There are five gates to our heart. Five gates to where? Our heart. One of the gates is our eyes. When you see a thing, it goes into your heart. When you hear a thing, it goes into your heart. That's why the Bible says, take heed what you hear. Because what you hear can go to your heart. Are you following me? Have you seen that picture? Do you like the picture you see? I'd like you to stretch up that picture wherever you are. Lord, you ask us to do this this morning, and we are obeying you. I use the picture in this uh, uh, the picture that is being raised up this morning, I lift it up in the name of Jesus before you. We join faith with faith. And we decree in one accord, in unity of spirit, that this picture will become your future. Amen. This picture will become your reality. Amen. What you are seeing right now, your eyes have seen it. The picture has entered into your heart. You see it again and again and again. But shortly, the world will see it. Amen. There was a time in my phone, I had pictures of baby clothes. Both baby girl and baby boy. Beautiful clothes. And once in a while, I look at the picture. And when you see something, the information goes into your heart. It's like photography. You know old photography? Huh? Uh, okay, uh, Gen Z don't know old photography. Oh, many years ago, we don't use this type of camera. This one is digital. Many years ago, when you want to snap picture, when you want to snap picture, they, your parents will take you to uh, one old man, photographer. He'll put towel, he'll put like this on his head. He'll, that thing is like this, like a box. When he snaps, he will remove the negative. Abby? Ah, some people don't know this thing. Oh. And take it for processing. Huh? Now, this man does not even need all that. He's already digital inside his camera. They will take it inside, put it with printer. Printer will print the picture. No, no, it's not like that. You go to, there are companies that process negative. They will process it with chemical. Then take it from there and take it to the dark room. That's the process. So then it will wash out. Then you see the picture. That's exactly how dreams come to pass. It will be captured. Have you captured what you've seen? Have you captured it? Once it is captured, the process has begun. I stand in agreement with you. The Bible says if two or three shall agree as touching anything on earth, it will be done to them. I stand in agreement with you and I decree this will become your reality. <laughs> I release angels in the, from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west.
that can make this happen. I release favor, grace, wisdom, every spiritual, physical, material resources that is needed, social resources, emotional resources that is needed to bring this to pass. They are released in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare you will climb this altar shortly. You will show us the picture. You will tell us it has been processed. You will bring it to church. Or you bring the key here. Or you bring the person here. To the shame of the enemy. In the name of Jesus. At the age of 18, I would draw, I would draw the front of a church. Then I would write the name of, our, of my church. You know, I used to, it was not royalty then. I didn't know what I was doing very well. So I would just write, I used to write uh, Fate of Life Ministries. <laughs> That's the name I used to call it. I would write Fate of Life Ministries. One day my father saw it. I, I went out. My father checked my books and saw that everything I was drawing were about church, church. My father called one of my professor uncle. Come and talk to him. We didn't want to go to school. He only wants to be a pastor. My father was afraid. Ah, only church is shiny, watch and yeah, look at. Because that's what I wanted to, that's what I saw in my heart. And as I was always carrying the picture everywhere, it became a reality. Abby, this is a reality. And it's still becoming more, it's still becoming reality. Lift it up. God who makes dream come to pass, will make your dream come to pass. Amen. I'd like you to screenshot that picture and keep it close to you. Shortly, you will testify. Amen. Every obstacle that wants to stop you from achieving this, I command them to give way. Amen. It is done. Amen. In Jesus' precious name we pray.